it's Sunday morning and I'm multitasking as usual. I'm making cheese straws and I've made them all wrong. <coughs> I used a bad technique, an old technique, <coughs> for rolling out. And the reason for that is that I didn't have my mind on the job. I was so excited because last night, very late, Sarah, um, who lives with us, went on David Erasmus' Twitter feed and discovered that my entry for the Solvi project was, was um, coming up trumps. I don't know what the final outcome will be, but coming up trumps at this stage. So, I've been thinking about that during the night and obviously still thinking about it this morning. Hence the fact that my beautiful cheese straws look like a bonsite. Um, they're made with <coughs> self-raising flour and egg and butter and cheese. Not surprisingly, plenty of salt and black pepper. Um, and people really love them. <coughs> Very useful for a starter. I've got my next interviewee coming for lunch, so I've got to get this done. But you can see the mess I'm in. Incidentally, they've been brushed with egg, which is a local egg, so it's really bright yellow. And our local butter is a similar colour. It has no extra colouring in it. That's just the way it is. I think that is phenomenal. And I'll find you a bit in a minute. Oh. I've now got flour all over the GoPro. Which is perked on a, perched on Nouveau Petit Le Russe Illustré, a French dictionary. It's the best use it's had actually since I've had it. Supporting my GoPro. Now, I'm going to put these in the oven for the first batch. And then I will clear up this mess and show you a much better way of rolling out, which you probably all do already, but I just like to show you. Get rid of all this flour. Oh, the mess. All right, let's start again, Jane. So it's quite an exciting day. Um, the Solvi project is solving, as I've said, global problems, uh, finding new and innovative solutions solutions to global problems. Oh, there's Isla barking in the garden. Hang on a minute, I'll just go and sort her out. As usual. As usual, there's several things going on in my head at once, so it's a little difficult to follow. Right, we're going to get some baking roll. Baking paper. Off a nice, nice big piece. We're going to then fold in half. Oh, good. Isla's coming here now. She knows that I'm a bit of a messy baker, so she's going to find stuff on the floor. I can't show you that to you because I've got my. GoPro plugged in because the battery's flat. Right, now then, flour. Dust the paper with flour. There we go. I'm going to put the flour on the paper like that. Oh dear, my camera's completely covered in flour. It's not my camera either, it's Sarah's. So. Oh dear. Now, I'm going to put that in there. Cookery presenters must spend all the time washing their hands. Or maybe they have a camera person. Okay. So that's what I've done. I've put the pastry between the two layers of paper on some flour. 
so it doesn't stick. Now I'm going to take my rolling pin, voila, and oh. roll out. Now, so what did it look like before? It looked like a chaotic disaster. Now it's looking much better. Because you want to roll this up really, really thin. So that that's what makes the cheese straws so yummy. Brush it with beaten egg. I really can't brush and show you, so you'll have to believe me that this is what I'm doing. And so I've only got one flowery GoPro camera, which is actually attached to the wall because I've let the battery go flat. So anyway, it doesn't stop me being excited about this project. Um, my idea is that older people like us could be backing up the youngsters who are doing having cutting edge projects with innovative, innovative ideas solving global problems. We have got the experience in the years we've lived. We might have a bit more time. And I think we can all contribute a lot more than a lot of us do. Right, now I'm going to cut this these cheese drawers. I like them to be all different sort of shapes and sizes with this. I'm not sure it's got a proper name, but I don't know what it is. But that stops it dragging the cheese drawers. I'll try and show you. See? I'm cutting it like that. Oh my goodness. The only trouble with a picture like that is that it probably picks up something in the back of the picture that you don't want people to see. Right. I haven't got any dirty linen or anything. Or a suitable thing. I'm going to shut the cupboard if you know what's in there. Full of little problems. Being successful is all about whatever it is, it's about solving those problems and solving them quickly. The great thing is, once you solve the problem, it doesn't stick around. So, that particular problem was that the baking tray I wanted was right at the back of the bottom shelf of my cupboard and my knees are still not right from having fallen over several times last week going to disabled meetings as I recall meetings about the disabled was rather a good example anyway um, trying to get down on your hands and knees when both kneecaps have been very thoroughly grazed is not nice or well, not even possible in some, some circumstances. Anyway, I'm going to get these things. I'm sure you're not supposed to eat the raw mixture. You know, it's got eggs in it and stuff, but it is so yummy. You just have to. Oh. Right. These are so thin that they are actually sticking paper. But you see that's real life. When people do it on these perfect television programmes of cooking, I just can't believe they actually managed to do that. This is real life cooking. This is as it happens. It's a chaotic kitchen. But the thing is that the net result is absolutely fabulous. Oh, here's my husband. <laughs> He's wondering why I'm talking to myself. Oh, oh right. You're very welcome to come in range, Mike, and feature. In fact, it'd be nice to see you because your nose is it's the only bit that's featured yet. Oh, I can smell those um, g straws. I'm going to have a look, examine the oven, which is on at number six. 
I'm sure there's some way I can give you this recipe, so I'll have to investigate that in a minute. Now, oh yes, first batch done. You see, that's only I haven't fast forwarded it. It's only a sort of six or seven minutes, and they're all ready to go. To be eaten, I mean. Now I'm going to put another lock in. And all I've got to do... Well, do you want a cup of tea? Runs on tea. I've been trying to give it up, low caffeine and stuff. I only, if I'm drinking tea, it's generally an emergency. Alright, I put it on there. I'm having trouble with my cheese straws. Do one more batch. Now this time I've got to remember, make sure I've got plenty of flour on both sides. I sort of flatten it down. Right. Off the gut. This is it. It's very satisfying making things which you know people are going to love. Sometimes I have to change them a bit to have things go wrong. But it's very seldom do I ever throw anything away. If the gatto collapses, it turns into a crumble, things like that. I'm not a bit enthusiastic with making it <coughs> so thin. Now this is a, one of the reasons I love this recipe, apart from it tasting really good, is that it came from a really great friend of mine who was Elizabeth Beresford, who was an inspiration, um, who wrote The Wombles. And she never ever gave up. She she didn't have an easy life in a lot of respects. But she was always encouraging to other people. And that's one of the most important things in my book. Encourage other people. And uh, right. Now then. I'm always setting fire to the tea today. In fact, Last night I only set fire to the house. Um, on Sunday mornings I go to the sommelier and um, I do a sort of thing for the kids. So, <laughs> dear, I'm still laughing about it. Um, I, <laughs> I decided that I was going to do the story of Mo Moses in the burning bush. <laughs> I wanted to make a burning bush. And suddenly, at 11 o'clock at night, I had to think about how to do this. Um, so, I tried various things, and I found an old piece of seaweed, actually, <laughs> which was shaped like a bush. It was all dried out. I thought, well, if I, if I pour a bit of mess, mess in a bowl, just a little bit, so I didn't set the house on fire, then... Um, Probably it would burn the mess and not the seaweed. And that would be Moses and Oh, you gosh! Oh, where am I going to put these? This really is Chaos Kitchen. <laughs> it's really so funny when you come to think about it all. My. They did go in the sink, I promise you that. I've got my feet while I'm cooking. Actually, she's gone somewhere else at the minute. Right, let's get back to the story. <laughs> I was wanting to set fire to this bush, and I did. 
and it was quite extraordinary. It's sort of all expanded in a way that I hadn't expected. In fact, it worked really well. The trouble was that it didn't work so well. There's not much of the bush left. I'm afraid that I may not be invited back after this week to the Salvation Army because if I make the amount of smell I made last night in our house, mind you, that was a whole. <laughs> cheese straws in the oven and continue to think what I'm going to do about this silver project how I can maximize my advantage I would love to set this up maybe you can comment underneath the video if you could help out in some way if you're an accountant you see they might need accountancy help or if you're an engineer they might have an engineering problem that you need solving you know out in Africa or wherever these projects are being done You've got the expertise and possibly a little bit of time. Right? Might see. Net result. First lot of cheese straws. They're not EU standard, they're just as I made them, but they will be yummy. Now onto the great vanishing Malteser cake, which is the best cake of all time. Am um, I supposed to be able to do it in seven minutes? I'm not sure I shall do that this morning, but we'll give it a go. First, I have to find a recipe. So I've got butter and syrup to melt in a pan. There we go. Get that melting down in the pan there. Um, now the biscuits. So we'll put the biscuits in there. I still haven't unpacked my shopping because I'm in a bit of a... Everything's a bit time critical this morning because I forgot to do the shopping yesterday and in Alderney the shop's shut at six and that's it. Biscuits in there. Meanwhile, the butter is burning in the pan, but no, never mind. Actually, I caught it just in time. Butter ready. Biscuits in. Oh, lovely. And we've got to put in the new cheeses. One extra in these packets, you know. It has to be finished up. We have to be accurate, of course. Now. I'm now stirring all this into the mix and we stir it until just have a look at these garlic mushrooms that I'm doing next door to it because as I say I everything's a bit time critical this morning. It's half past nine. Nine thirty. We've got to be at the salier at twenty past. 
having changed, and I'm still in my wellies because they were the easiest and quickest thing to put on this morning. I'm just stirring all this gunge around in here. It doesn't look promising, but I promise you, the finished product is amazing. Oh, oh yes, and I've got the, the tin I was going to put in, or not the tin. My favourite plastic date baking dish has got in the remains of what I made yesterday, which I have to say doesn't look very pretty, but was absolutely great to eat. But I have to keep it in the freezer because it's a bit wibbly wobbly. It was... It was... Um, muesli and honey and butter and cranberries because somebody gave Mike some cranberries for his birthday and I cooked them and had to use them so we put them in here which was fine it was really nice it took down the sweetness of the recipe but it hasn't stuck together terribly well so that is going to be recycled into a dessert for today We'll call it something amazing. Like cranberry crush. And we'll serve it with the other thing that I'm making at the moment, which is a great vanishing Maltese cake. Whip up some cream and that'd be great. I shan't show them what it looks like in this, these stages, but it's mm, so nice. Everything. And I find if you've got something a bit gross, if you whip up some cream, stick it over the top. Maybe put a few sprinkles on top. You know? It's brilliant. Where did you get the recipe? The funniest thing was when I um, made some soup for somebody who's quite nice and quite well connected. And uh, I had one of those days. I burnt it first. And then I put it in the liquidizer without putting the seal in the bottom. So the whole lot flooded out the bottom, as it does. And uh, well, I'm just greasing the the um, thing here, which I just washed up. So put the <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Uh, just greasing it to put the um, great vanishing Maltese cake in. Yeah, and <laughs> yes, I was just telling you the story of the soup. And the soup flooded out on its worktop, so I shoved it all back in, what I could catch before it dripped on the before it dripped on the floor. Um. And I put it back in the saucepan and I tasted it and it actually didn't taste too bad. Um, I put in some smoked paprika because that's always useful for covering up things. Served it with cream and everybody was saying, oh Jane, can we have the recipe? Well, no, <laughs> they really couldn't. It had been a rather, it had been on a sort of adventure before it got to their plates. But see, it's amazing what you can pull out of the basket. Um, yoghurt's great if you put in too much pepper. Now, this horrible looking affair is going to go into the freezer so it's nice and ready for lunch. And I, before I serve it, I shall melt a significant amount of chocolate, a bar of plain chocolate, a couple of bars of plain chocolate, and pour it over the top. and. I'll tell you, yummy. I might even film the reaction, but I might forget, depending. It's one of those days. I've just decided to make a little um, modification to my great vanishing Maltese cake. I'm sure this is not the way to do it, but Sarah loves cherries, and so do I, incidentally. And what I'm going to do is I'm pressing them into the 
already made cake. Now this is totally out of the rule book. But this is what I mean about being creative, doing things differently. You don't actually have to always do the thing according to the book. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this turns out. I have to put on lashings of chocolate to cover up all these little bubbly bits. But this should be just something else. I've put the chocolate on, I've put it on the high side of the cake, on the dessert, and I'm going to, it doesn't seem to be running off too badly, I'm going to stick it quickly in the fridge, and hopefully um, that will cause the chocolate to set quickly before it drips off the top. 